uh, primary concern is that only, only some people care. After all warning and, and preparing humanity for life extension event is very annoying and laborious and, and no one knows how to, how to cope in this situation. Sad as it may be, this work of uh, fiction carries away too many similarities with our resolve to seek solutions to, to intensifying impacts of climate change on our lives and, and the economy. As far as I recall, the most common response to climate change is the question, what does that have to do with me, with my family, with my business and uh, our policies? Well, not so much today, but uh, it can alter our way of life as we know it, it tomorrow. Many ask whether the consequences of climate change are the ultimate and, and worrisome. The simple answer to this is yes, they are. We are beginning to experience it more and more intensely at home in the country we, we know best. No other country has compared to its size as many mineral springs as my homeland, Slovakia, water rich for, for centuries, and yet we suffer, we suffer from droughts. In January this year, the Slovak Hydro Meteorological Institute published a report on the last year's drought in, in Slovakia, and it reads as follows. Uh, the year 2022 was exceptional in terms of drought occurrence in, in Slovakia. Arid conditions uh, occurred in, in more than half of the country, and the drought duration in some places was more than 200 days. In most districts in Slovakia, the harvest was meager, and the drought significantly affected forest ecosystems. Even those even though seemingly insignificant and for many negligible changes change the entire ecosystem, higher temperatures exacerbate many types of disasters, including storms, heat waves, floods and droughts. A warmer climate creates an atmosphere that can collect, retain, and, and, and release more water, and changes weather conditions so that wet areas become drier and, and drier. Let's rewind and, and look at what all this has to do with central bankers. The role of a central bank is uh, definitely is not to pivot, but, uh, but to drive the response. It's primarily up to the governments, academia, innovators, and, and businesses. They are the first line of defense. Our role, our role is more of a facilitator, and, and we are facilitators, supporters. Still, how does it all relate to the financial sectors, uh, stability, sustainability, and resilience of the financial system, policymakers, businesses, and definitely us? The topic of of uh, today's conference is sustainability opportunities and risks in, in the context of the impacts of climate change. Since, since childhood, all of us um, have been indoctrinated and, and guided by our parents not to put off until tomorrow what uh, can be done and, and fixed uh, today. I do agree it's a wise but often annoying principle Nevertheless, uh, well on the spot. The devil's advocate would raise a hand and uh, remind me that future generations will be more innovative and, and have enhanced and, and cutting-edge technologies uh, dwarfing today's capabilities. As a result, hopefully they will be able to solve problems insurmountable for us today. Sure, but it can be too late. It's called the tragedy of the time horizon. The National Bank of Slovakia, the ECB, and other central banks and supervisors from around the world can and will play its part and help the change to happen. 
within our mandates. Rigorous analysis uh, will be a crucial tool. We have a platform for that. It's called uh, NGFS. And NGFS has developed a typical picture of what our economies might look like under different um, assumptions together with uh, leading academic climate institutions. And these are called uh, climate scenarios. We are starting to, to understand better risks related to the green transition. Uh, we can now uh, um, identify physical and macrofinancial risks. And these climate scenarios can help policymakers, financial institutions, businesses and the public to deal with uncertainty ahead, to, to better understand it. We can't fix everything today, and we won't, and we will don't need to. We, so, so we need to stay agile but realistic. The last thing uh, is to overburn, to overregulate the, the financial system and the more harm than damage, what we used to do in, in Europe so often. And there are, in my view, there are five things for us to do to help to steer the public debate, as we try today, for example, to drive collaboration among the central banks, market supervisors, here the NGFS is vital, to assist uh, financial institutions with the transition, then invest in data collection, quality and granularity of data, analyze them and create scenarios, and finally enhance um, our models and, and forecasting, so lovely forecasting to, to understand climate change impacts on, on inflation better. And all this, all this is doable and, and already in motion. So I'm, I'm really quite optimistic that together we can manage even these uh, challenges. As Albert, Albert Camus once said, Real generosity toward the future lies in giving all to the present. But enough from, from my side. It's my pleasure and, and privilege to welcome my good friend, uh, Klaas Knott, who, apart from being the distinguished president of, of Dutch Central Bank uh, and the longest serving member of our, our governing council, and is also the chair of the Financial Stability Board. And an old Dutch proverb says that even the sun doesn't rise in the morning for free. And meaning Dutch uh, uh, knew for centuries that we will have to pay up one, one day. And it seems that day has, has arrived. So enjoy today's conference, and class, please, so the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. I hope that you can all hear me well. And, well, at least I can see myself, so I guess you can see me, and I hope that the audio is also okay. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, again, uh, for having me at this conference at a day uh, in which I think the word crisis has clearly uh, a multiple meaning. Uh, our thoughts are, of course, with the many casualties uh, that we've all seen from the terrible earthquake in uh, Turkey and, and Syria. Um, but today I want to talk about a different crisis, and that's the crisis on which this uh, conference is dedicated, and that has to do with the climate crisis. Um, I want to start with a quote and I hope that you will all uh, immediately recognize this quote. I quote, in Slovakia, 42% of young people are very worried about the climate crisis. 73% think that humanity has failed to look after our planet. Two thirds find politicians' actions to address the climate crisis disappointing. A recent study carried out in a number of other countries has shown that 40% of young people are considering not having children because of the climate crisis. It is clear the next generation knows we're running out of time." End of quote. Those 
were actually the words of your president, Susanna Chaputova, at the United Nations Climate Conference in Glasgow. Words that deeply impressed me as a world citizen, as a central banker, but also as a father. It is not often that statistics are so vivid, so visual, even though our economist heart always thinks they are. She was so right. The climate crisis is a crisis that is all-encompassing and one that we've seen coming for a long time. And that's what sets this crisis, this challenge, apart from other challenges that we are facing. We could have seen it coming, but we sat on our hands and we stared at each other instead of taking action. And now we're running out of time. So as your president stated, we must double down on our efforts to mitigate the impact of the climate crisis to reverse the devastation of our planet. It was obvious that she was not talking about tomorrow, but that she was talking about today. To show young people, our children, that our generation also knows we are running out of time. Of course, her call to action was addressed at politicians, not at central bankers, but I am convinced that we can also have an important role to play. That was also the conclusion that we reached in my first year as president of the Dutch Central Bank in 2011. During a team building weekend at sea, we, my colleagues at the executive board and I, we talked about our goals, our view for the future, the future of the bank and the future of the financial sector. And that was necessary because in 2011, the financial sector and our economy were recovering from the blows of the financial crisis. A crisis that, in addition to costing a great deal of money, had also cost citizens confidence in banks in the financial sector. So we had to restore that confidence for our citizens and our sector, for our economy and for our future. The question was, of course, how? We decided that our mission as a central bank and as a financial supervisor should focus more on our contribution to sustainable prosperity and hence sustainable finance. We decided that we would choose to emphasize the long term instead of the short term. To look beyond financial welfare to well-being, to look beyond mere economic growth to inclusive, sustainable growth. Because we were convinced that sustainability was a prerequisite to restore confidence, a prerequisite to safeguard the future for our citizens and for our financial sector. 11 years ago, that was, I may say so myself, a bold decision because sustainability was not yet mainstream. It was not yet on every agenda. But what could and can a central bank, what can we do to help save our planet? Definitely not everything. As my colleague Peter Casimir already pointed out, we are not elected politicians. We are not in the driving seat, but we are definitely part of the team. A part of the team in three different ways, in three different roles that I want to briefly elaborate on. As a supervisor and regulator, as a long-term economic advisor, and as a leader by example. One of the first steps was the development of a sustainable finance strategy with the aim to having sustainability integrated into all our core tasks by 2025. This strategy sets out a clear path to really make a difference in all the three roles that I just mentioned and to move the needle on becoming more sustainable while respecting the boundaries of our mandate. And that was an important step. Over the past decade, we did more, we took more steps to take our place in the team. And in this speech, I intend to give some examples. Not an exhaustive list, but things that we can do as an inspiration for what you can do, for what we can do together. To start with the obvious, as a supervisor and regulator, we have a responsibility to address macro and micro prudential risks and thereby contribute to financial stability. In this capacity, we can help guide financial institutions to identify, recognize and mitigate risks 
including climate-related risks, and should such risks materialize, prevent them from having serious consequences. To give a few examples here, we have developed a climate stress testing framework for transition risks, which we will expand this year to also include a focus on physical risks. Also late last year, DNB published a guide with good practices to control climate and environment related risks. This guide was particularly aimed at insurance and pension funds and was in line with the ECB's 2020 guide, which was aimed at the banks. It seeks to provide financial institutions with constructive good practices to help with their risk management. In the near term, we aim to integrate climate and environment related risks into our regular periodic supervision. Second, our role as a long-term economic advisor is of course based on accumulated knowledge, on data and facts. We are central bankers, we're not philosophers. Before we tackle a problem, we have to understand it. And in order to understand it, we have to quantify it. So we accumulate essential data to monitor developments in order to take effective decisions. We do that as a national central bank, but especially in tandem with other organizations like the ECB and like the FSB, the Financial Stability Board. For example, statisticians from central banks in the euro area have recently been working hard with the ECB to generate sustainability data data that indicate the carbon footprint of the financial sector's investments, which can be used to gauge the degree of exposure of the sector to transition risks. Data that indicate physical risks due to climate change through loans and investments. Data that indicate the extent to which financial institutions have invested in bonds aimed at promoting sustainability, the so-called green bonds. Of course, these data are not yet complete. But they are urgently needed today, not tomorrow, because we need to know as much as we can to take on our role as a long term economic advisor, not only for the financial institutions that we supervise and advise, but as policy advisors also for our governments nationally and internationally, because they have to take the lead in the transition that must take place they have to develop and enforce a clear climate policy and they have to take the responsibility to enable and inspire the sustainable choices that we all must make tough major choices will have to be made between intensive farming and nature between fossil fuels and green energy between heavy industry and air quality we can help to make that happen in our role as forward thinkers. Especially because forward means to me independent and for the long term, not under the influence of voters, not just until the next elections. And that is an important role we have to invest in. To be that angel or devil or the Jiminy Cricket on the shoulder of our politicians, whispering in their ears or pulling them to make sure that sustainable choices are not only made, but successfully stimulated and implemented. And that takes us to our third role, the leader by example. As an organization, we can and must set an example. We must make our own sustainable choices. For instance, in our payment systems, in our monetary operations, and of course, in our own investments as a central bank. That is our responsibility as the central bank. And that is why I'm proud that the Nederlandse Bank was the first central bank to sign the principles of responsible investment in 2019. This marked the start of our journey towards the integration of responsible investment in our own account portfolios. In our internal operations too, we try to be as sustainable as possible in the choices that we make. For instance, in the renovation of our headquarters building, the product of which you will hopefully see behind me. In the choice of materials and in the choice of solutions for energy consumption. For example, we made the old concrete carbon neutral by injecting it with CO2. That is a world first. 
We will also have a lot of greenery in and around our building and up on the roofs. We will place nesting boxes and insect hotels in those green areas. And these features will help us building contribute to, to will help our building contribute to biodiversity right in the heart of the city of Amsterdam. We are doing all this not only to help the transition, to do our bit to save our planet, but also to set an example, a very practical example. For the financial institutions that we supervise, for our clients, for our partners, and for the people in our country and the rest of Europe. Because the transition we need is not only a matter of policy, of rules and regulations. The transition we need is fueled by change, by changing people's minds and behaviors. By encouraging and inspiring people and businesses to think and act differently to make different choices. And that is why it is important that you are all here today to talk about what we can do to advance the transition to sustainability. To talk about how to take up our roles as supervisors and regulators, as long-term economic advisors and as leaders by example. About how to double down on our efforts to mitigate the impact of the climate crisis, to reverse the devastation of our planet as your president also said in Glasgow. All while keeping in mind that saving the planet is a team effort. Or, as Sir David Attenborough said during that same climate summit in Glasgow, if working apart, we are a force powerful enough to destabilize our planet, then surely working together, we are powerful enough to save it. Let me stop here and hand over back to the chair again. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Klaus Not and his speech at the opening of our conference. Now, let me introduce the host of our first panel discussion of the day on the topic of the future of banking and managing risks in times of uncertainty and inflation. Rainer Martin, head of research of National Bank of Slovakia, will head the panel discussion right now. So I would like to ask him to join us at the podium. And the participants of the first discussions of the day are Alexander Resch, the CEO of VUB, Peter Krutil, the CEO of Slovenska Sporiteľnia, and Paul Hebert, the head of systematic risk and financial institutions at European Central Bank. I would like to, gentlemen, ask you also to come up to the stage for the first discussion of the day. We'll take care of the mics and everything important. In the meantime, I would like to ask you if Please go to slido.com and use hashtag 